Hello everybody, and today we are going to be talking about the enhanced threat that is going to be occurring over a weird area, actually. We are seeing it over here in New York. Now, this isn't unheard of. This is a historical time, we could call it, where we have had actually a May 15th outbreak in New York. So, or I shouldn't say outbreak, it was multiple tornadoes, because an outbreak is technically 20 tornadoes, and I think this had nine big tornadoes and potentially some other ones. But... This was a few years ago, and we saw it really in this area. So we're tracking the same region, and so that's some big stuff looking at it there. And so we're going to talk about really two big areas. We're going to talk about what's occurring in the Ohio Valley into the Northeast, and then we're going to talk about what's happening in the Oklahoma and Texas. So this is going to be a shorter one because we are going to see here in a second there is actually a very low tornado threat compared to normal. We do have that 5% in here, but it is not hatched. So we are not expecting any big significant tornadoes or anything, nothing that we would call significant. So I'm going to go ahead and show you the hail because this is where we're going to see the most. And up here in really that New York area, we're not seeing the biggest hail threat. So that's kind of interesting in there. And we actually see the same threat over here in the parts of Colorado, Kansas, and Nebraska. And then our actually our hatched, our biggest area is right in here across portions of Texas into Oklahoma. So we're not seeing the big area where we're seeing the big area. So it's kind of interesting for hail. But what does give this the enhanced threat is this. The really moderate wind or I guess a 30% wind threat and we get damaging winds whenever it's down in the yellow and so whenever we have that red that's whenever we can say we guarantee you there's going to be damaging winds through here and so I want to show you now what they're talking about in the discussion and we're going to talk about a few of the things and then we're going to go ahead and look at the northeast first and then we're going to head down to Texas so there's enhanced risk as I said but overall what we are expecting is there's going to be severe thunderstorms across portions of the northeast states this afternoon. Severe thunderstorms are also expected across southern plains, while isolated strong to severe thunderstorms are possible across the central high plains. So looking at what they're talking about for the northeastern states, uh, there is going to be basically a squall line is going to develop and allow for some big daytime convection with this out in front since it is so warm today. And it's going to be an international border thing where you guys see it cross the border there. And then we're going to see it head into New York. So this evolution favors strong, I thought that was on a line, uh, it favors strong, let me find it again. Oh yeah, so it favors strong boundary, boundary layer heating from the central Appalachians into upstate New York where the surface temperatures are expected to warm in the mid-70s prior to frontal passage. So the latest thinking is convection will re-intensify. So basically we're seeing that this day, the storm this morning is kind of dying off over in the Midwest and as it gets to the Ohio Valley we're going to see that re-intensification of the line. And so we're going to see it spread east within a westerly flow regimen uh, that should favor updraft organization. So we are seeing these storm storms get stronger as they enter this area. So really, the most likely thing is it's going to be a mixed storm mode. And so we're going to see damaging winds, hail, and a few tornadoes can be expected with thunderstorm clusters that spread from far from west to east across New York towards the New England area by early by the early evening. So our biggest threats are going to be damaging winds, hail, and potential for a few tornadoes can be expected in there. So that is interesting since they are saying that tornadoes can be expected. Really, I don't understand personally why they haven't upgraded this yet to a little bit of a higher, maybe a 10%. Uh, but they have given it the five. No normally, whenever there is that word that a few tornadoes can be expected, they go ahead and put significant on there. But it is a weird situation as of right now. We can't expect that to be upgraded, actually, by the end of the day or by the midday, by the end of the morning. And so that's why we are expecting uh, a new, whenever this new outlook comes out, kind of a more impressed system. So 
we see that across the southern plains we are going to see damaging winds are possible uh, and it's really going to be less of a huge tornado threat and a damaging wind threat or it's going to be a damaging wind threat but not a tornado threat and there is potential for hail across the plains so across the plains we are going to see we're going to see hail and wind while across really the northern states we're going to see wind and maybe like a low tornado so that we're going to go ahead and show you what all is going on in the atmosphere so we're going to go ahead and we're going to skip the temperature because as you read in there we normally we do the temperature but as you read in there it's really going to be a warm day overall so we're going to go ahead and check out the regional and we're going to show you right here in the northeast right where we could see this best view for today what we can expect as we go through the day so as of right now so this is the morning hours this is 11 a.m we see over ohio that we see a few cells popping up uh, right in here where they're going to actually develop somewhere in here and we're going to see some big time development coming in the system right behind it so these cells really increase so we're going to see some rain out in front of this and then you see that there is this kind of this line that you can kind of see it's a linear of uh, some strength that develops here and then the second one you can see that develops here this is going to become a very severe system in eastern ohio so right in here right where i pointed we do see that squall line form it really since our last scan was here somewhere in here is where we're going to see that squall line form but the biggest case is going to be what you see now up here a massive squall line and taking you back to the last scan which is three hours prior there was zero up here there was nothing and so looking back to this we just see rapid development and that's because this storm system hits a pocket of air that develops right in here that is going to allow it to be very warm air but we see lift that is allowing these storms to really produce and then we're going to see some shear out in front that we're going to see this storm be the biggest intensifier and it's actually going to be aided by this storm we're going to see this storm feeding that way we do see some individual supercells that are going to produce down in pennsylvania and parts of new jersey and a line of cells across central pa So as we go to about 8 p.m., this is our 8 p.m. time, we've seen, once again, that, that the biggest threat for an storms that enhanced is basically here. So it is going to be this northern storm, but as you see, it is a strengthened storm. We see that there is a lower area with some supercells to the north, but you can even see there's a little rotation right in there. And so looking overall, we just see a mess basically after this. So then we'll track that into 11 p.m. and that's where we see the complete die off and just kind of some leftover scud. So looking back up into the northeast your most severe time is going to be between so 21 Z so eastern time this is going to be 5 p.m. and then really to 8 or 9 and so that last game was 5 this is 8 so we see the storm track from here and we see it shrink actually to where the biggest gust front is right in here. So we're going to go ahead and show you now what the wind is really looking like here. So we're going to we're going to show you these two times since we're focusing on the 5 to 8 p.m. time and just to give you a kind of a peace of mind with this so you don't have to keep calculating. 1 knot is 1.1 mile per or 1 mile per hour is 1.1 knots. So, or what, I have that backwards. Uh, one knot is 1.1 mile per hour. So whenever you see through this, uh, whenever we get past 50, once you get to 50, it's actually 60. So you can keep thinking that way. So we do have, looking through here, whenever this squall line develops in eastern Ohio, we do see that whenever we look at this, we see 64 knots. And so when we look at this sounding, we're going to see what it is talking about. So there's not a super big severe risk, as you can see with this. But what we do see is they are very close in here. We see it's, it's a capped environment, but we are going to see 
potentially a shelf cloud with this because we are seeing storm motion and then we see that shear, that V shape in there. And so that is going to show us that this is a really a windy environment. We're not seeing any chance of tornadoes anywhere really in here. But looking back up here, we do see the 50 and 60 knots area. So we are seeing potentially 70 mile per hour wind gusts whenever we see this out in front. So just to outline the two squall lines we are looking at. And so we're going to go ahead and track and show you when in New York it's going to get the most windy. And so we're going to see between really these areas, if you live anywhere in here, you can expect wind speeds of upwards of 80 mile per hour because we are seeing 67, we could even get up to 70 knots. So we are looking at close to 80 mile per hour wind gusts. And these storms behind it are still packing some heavy winds too. So that's our wind up in the northeast. That's why we're seeing damaging winds. We're going to see some localized potential downbursts with these, but big time lines that are going to be moving through. So looking back at the energy here, we're going to show you what our most unstable cape is because when we see, it's actually quite surprising. We're not really seeing all that much cape. So the most unstable cape, we actually see it from the south. And there's not much. Those two lines were here, and then we see some here. So it's only being fed by a few areas, which is quite interesting. If we do look at the mixed layer cape, that's where we see it's actually even less. So this is not a cape-filled environment. It's actually going to be built up by daytime convection and energy being flowed from other places. So when we look at our supercell composite for this time, we do see that this line is going to be allowing some supercells to produce out in front, but it's not really about the supercells producing, it's actually that the energy is there for supercells. So we're going to see stronger systems within this line. So our SIGTOR, when we see this, it is also very low. That's why we only have that 5% chance. But there is the potential that we could see some spin-ups. And we look when we look ahead, we're not seeing any of these crazy huge storms as they move through having a huge tornado threat. There is a low threat, so that's why they do have that listed, that there is a potential for some of those big storms to drop a tornado or two. But yeah, looking at the helicity when we see this, Really, overall, we're not seeing anything that is showing us that these storms are going to be big rotating storms. So they're going to be damaging wind squall lines all the way. We do see a helicity, though, a little bit right here. Let's see if this says anything about... Yeah, see, there's none. Very close. So high wind shear environments here where we're going to see a lot of damaging winds. So up in the northeast, once again, we do have that enhanced threat basically in here. Uh, I would think in this entire area, watch out for damaging winds. That is your biggest threat today. And if you're anywhere in that slight, you could expect damaging winds. And that slight range travels all the way up through here. So I would expect anywhere in here, specifically up here in New York, is where you're going to get the most damaging winds in here. But I would also watch anywhere in this portion of the Ohio Valley because you are going to be experiencing that second squall line. So going to that Texas area where we are looking at storms producing, we are going to go ahead and show you from the afternoon on what you can expect because that is our second area of the big time convection. And as we see through the day, this is we're going to start at 11 a.m. This is our big storm that we see that split in right now. So as we go through the day, we are going to see that we are seeing this re kind of energy energy energization of this storm where we're seeing it re-energize and whenever we see this re-energize we're going to see a squall line is moving straight south and so we go through and we are actually going to see this break apart again but it's going to have a two squall line ratio here we're going to see two squall lines and then some big time supercells over midland texas the north of that midland texas area midland's like right in here so we're going to see that, and then we're going to see a whole lot of tiny supercells form in the south, but, specific, but specifically over Texas is where we're seeing the most of these supercells, and the big time ones are going to produce out here. So showing you the wind for this time, they are isolated supercells. We're going to see big time winds within these supercells. So potentially 50, 60 mile per hour winds are what we can expect. 
So looking at the most unstable cape, this is where the environment is allowing us to have crazy amounts. That's why we're seeing this over Texas. We're seeing out in the upper 5,000s, which is compared to the hundreds that were up in the northeast. That's why we're seeing these rapid intensification of these cells. We look over one or two hours and this storm goes from nothing to the biggest storm in the area. So that's why we're seeing that. And we see the surface-based cape is also extremely high, fueling all of these supercells that you could see in these little holes that are producing. So when we look at supercell composite, obviously they're going to be uh, more high out here. You can see these bigger supercells, but we are going to see along the line more of an environment that will allow for these. And so that's why we see the potential for that. So overall, when we look at our tornado parameter out here, it is very low in these storms. But what we can expect is along the squall line potential for some rotation. But the big thing in the Texas area where these storms are at, we're going to see damaging winds in here and then supercells looking right through here. And so that's what we can expect overall today. So looking back to the whole country, what we were able to see is basically we have two areas. You can expect thunderstorms that are going to go really damaging wind style up here and then really supercell environment down here. So if you live in the Texas, Oklahoma area right, right around the Red River, you can expect um, some bigger supercells and some damaging wind combinations. Texas, you can expect supercells. Oklahoma, more of a damaging wind squall line. And then up in New York, you can expect damaging wind squall lines also. So just going through, looking back today to kind of review, that's what you can expect overall here is the really the biggest tornado threat actually overall based on models is actually down here in Oklahoma and Texas because of potential spin up. But what we could expect overall is really storms to produce damaging winds in Oklahoma. Um, in Oklahoma A, but our biggest biggest system is going to be over New York. So as New York's first system of the year, we're going to see the biggest storm uh, be here in New York as we are going to see it spread pretty much clear down through here. And then we can't expect another squall line here and then individual supercells. There are going to be some big time rain and hail producers all the way into parts of the northern into central Texas. So we'll leave you with that today. Remember to stay safe and be weather ready and check out our forecast posted every day. And then on Saturday, we post the whole weekend forecast. Remember to stay safe and once again, to be weather ready.